Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Fireside. You know, I love that smokiness, smokiness of the lap song. So good, so good guys. So today we're gonna be talking photo. We've been doing a lot of Starlink, a lot of tech stuff, but today is going to be a photo day. And it has come to my attention based on a couple of articles I read. It was an article that talked about Canon actually helping Russia fight the Ukraine or invade the Ukraine with some drones or unmanned aerial vehicles. So it seems that the actual internals of these drones, the capturing device in it is a, let's say, budget Canon camera. So we're going to get into that in just a second. Before I do, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. There's a lot of good stuff there and it's free for just you guys being here. What do you think? The merch is in guys. Check it out. Go over to the website, jchristina.com. You like that tea time logo? I drew this up about, uh, about half a year ago or so. Finally, we got a company that is going to be making our merch and they did such a good job with it. There was a couple of companies that we tested out and they really didn't do so well. These are just awesome. The shirts, the mugs, and all the rest of the stuff that they're producing is just amazing. Before I get started, I want to give a shout out to Ethan B. out of Wellington. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. What I find very interesting in this article is it really shows how low tech these UAVs are coming out of Russia. Now, the UAVs that we see here in the United States, they're like crazy sophisticated, right? And these are literally put together with duct tape and stuff. Anyways, I'll get into it. I want to read through this article a little bit because I think it's fascinating. Also, there is a two-minute video. I'm going to play it over here or over there. You're not going to understand it anyways, most likely, unless you speak the language. But... Just to see it is kind of fascinating and I'll come in and out of it or something. This article, once again, was from Petapixels, what I was referencing. And it says that the Ukraine Ministry of Defense has released a video in which the Ukrainian soldier disassembles a Russian military surveillance drone. Their teardown reveals a remarkably rudimentary design that features a low-end Canon DSLR camera at its core. Now, which Canon are they using? I'll get to that in just a second. They continue by saying that the two minute video was published by Army Inform, the information agency of the Ukraine's defense ministry. It shows a soldier sitting next to what is said to be a Russian Orland 10, that's the name of the drone, unmanned aerial vehicle or UAV that had crashed in the Ukraine. So this is the video. And when you look at it, it's like, I, I just, I can't believe once again, how rudimentary this thing is. I mean, it is literally held together with duct tape. Um, it, it's just strange to me. It is really strange. I expect something that is like high end, you know, like extremely high end, like something that we would see from DJI or maybe from Parrot or, you know, like a Phantom 4 or a Mavic or something, but it's not. It is absolutely not. And maybe it's like that for a purpose because they don't want anything high tech because that's all it needs to do is capture photographs. And I'll tell you why that's all that it needs to do in just a second. They continue by saying the soldier found out that the primary camera responsible for image capture is the Canon EOS Rebel T6i or the 750D. Depends if you're in Europe or overseas or if you're here in the United States. Here we call it the T6i. That is a pretty rudimentary camera. It is bottom basement, let's say, to the Canon line. And it probably runs about 750 bucks when it was introduced back in 2015. Whereas now you could probably pick it up for two, 300 bucks on eBay. So we're talking about a cheap camera. And once again, it feels like this entire drone is built extremely cheaply. Maybe they build hundreds of them and if they lose them, they really don't care. 
I really don't know. But with this image that we see here, you can tell that this is just a Canon um, DSLR camera mounted onto this metal plate. And there's other cameras involved, not just the Canon. As you can see, there's two other cameras there. Not sure what they are. Maybe one is infrared. Maybe one is something else. I really don't know. Now, the camera is mounted to this board and it's using this like hook loop type of fastener that we all know as Velcro. <laughs> Yeah, it, the, the Canon camera is mounted with Velcro. I don't know. Anyways, the Canon itself is put in there with Velcro, and then the dial at the top, the mode dial, is glued into position, so it can't change from any kind of bumps or jars. And on the top of the drone, you can see a little cap, like a plastic cap, and that cap is being held by a little piece of wire. And this cap really looks like the top of maybe a water bottle or something. Once again, extremely low tech, but it's obviously doing the job. Now, what one of the news agencies out of the Ukraine said was this drone is called a Union, I guess, U-N-I-A-N, reported back in 2017 that these drones were about 87 to $120,000 US, these drones. I mean... The amount of gear in here probably puts them in at maybe a couple of thousand dollars, maybe 5,000 at max. I don't even think so. Probably a couple of thousand dollars, about it. And they were selling for about 87 to $120,000. So I guess Russian military are similar to the US military. They get screwed continuously, right? And they're sold hammers for two and three thousand dollars because they can just afford them because we pay for them right now the soldier that you see in this image is attaching that orlin 10 to a catapult device basically it shoots it into the air so it doesn't have to slowly take off so that's kind of pretty cool actually now there was a couple of things quoted from that union ukraine news network or news agency and they said that quote the Orlin 10 is developed by Russian-based Special Technology Center, LTD. The hull and the engine are made in Russia and its electronic components in Taiwan. And as we can see, possibly Japan too, coming out of Canon. The quote continues by saying, Russia often uses this model of UAV for reconnaissance and adjustment of artillery fire. So obviously these are being flown around the battlefield to relay back information on positional things. They're not like high-end drones that are sitting up there and using the sun to power themselves to be up there for you know, 10, 12 hours straight capturing all sorts of data and reconnaissance and whatnot. It's not really for that. It's more for a general look on the battlefield where troops are or where artillery or anti-aircraft guns are or whatnot, quote unquote, hard targets so they can actually target them using their artillery fire. Now, bear in mind, I said that Canon is kind of inadvertently helping Russia invade the Ukraine. And obviously that's not really the case because Canon did, I think it was right around March, say that they were suspending all new shipments into Russia, basically in response to um, the country invading the Ukraine. So many companies did this, guys. I don't know if, probably you could probably count on a hand or two how many companies have not stopped sending product to Russia because the entire globe has got around the Ukraine and kind of brought them in close and has sympathized with them. So most companies today are not doing business with Russia. I really don't know how long they're going to be able to hang in there with basically having only a couple of um, nations to do business with. You know, you have China, maybe the folks over in North Korea, maybe Cuba. I mean, how many places are left? I did find this fascinating because it just goes to show that these old cameras that we look at today as being dinosaurs, um, you know, a DSLR from 2015 is really doesn't have much value. And truth be told, the answer to that is no. A lot of older DSLRs are very capable and could be used today for doing wedding photography or product photography or just about any type of photography. Just because it has a mirror that doesn't make it bad. And I feel like the narrative that's being pushed in our community or our industry, 
both photo and video is that if a unit has a mirror, it's no longer valid. It's no longer good. It shouldn't be used. You need to buy a mirrorless whatever. Mirrorless, 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 and that's all you hear. And it's just kind of a little bit crazy. Um, matter of fact, I pulled out one of my older DSLRs. It is a 5D Mark II the other day. And I took some photos and I ended up screwing it up. I'll tell you about that in a second. But I took some photos with it and I was looking at the images. I'm like, these things are just, it's just awesome. I mean, they really look fantastic. Even now, 10 years later, they look great. And it's 100% usable for events or product photography or just about anything. You could even do video with it. 1080p, that looks fantastic. Do you need 4K? Probably not. This video right here is done in 1080p. Why? Because you probably don't want to see my face in 4K. This is not necessary, right? So 1080p is still good. Now, I pulled that camera out. I shot it a couple of times. Then for some reason, one of the pins in the camera itself, in the CF card reader inside the camera, yeah, bent. <sighs> sad, sad time, sad time. So I might do a video of me tearing down the entire camera and attempting to fix that pin. Does it work? Does it not? I don't know. <laughs> but if you want to see that video, let me know in the comment area below this video. And also, what do you think about this whole Ukraine thing and how we see that the Canon T6i is in this drone? And look at the drone. What do you think about the drone? Do you think that this is, like I said, just something that's disposable, that is not their quote unquote high tech? Or do you think this is the kind of drones or UAVs that Russia has? I want to know your thoughts. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please throw it a thumbs up. That would be great. Also, subscribe to the channel. There's over 700 videos for you to see here. Go check them out. Also, click this little button over here so I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And when you click the button, also click all so that you will get all of my notifications. That's the only way that this thing works. Don't ask me why, YouTube. Anyways, don't forget, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. Don't forget also, the merch is there. The shirts, the cups, there's going to be other things that are coming in probably this weekend, I believe. I should be done with some other designs and whatnot. So definitely check them out. So guys, I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Love you guys. Bye.